the board up here, if I can call it that, has a quotation out of the New York Times from a few years ago, which said something that's been said by many others in many different ways, that we're in the critical stage of cultural change called a change of age. A change of age doesn't occur very often. The last one was called the Renaissance, and that was 400 years ago. But it seems apparent to those who reflect on these things that shortly after World War II, we began to go through cultural transformations that constitute a change of age. Now, that change involves a lot of other contributory changes, but the most important of which is that our way of thinking changes. That was recognized perhaps uh, most acutely and with greatest brevity by Einstein when he made this famous statement that you can't solve the problems created by our current pattern of thought using our current pattern of thought. The interesting thing about this quotation is I've never found a manager or a professional who disagreed with this statement, but I found damn few that ever knew what it meant. It's very easy to agree with something the meaning of which is completely vague. In the Renaissance, when science as we know it today was born, naturally they had to have a way of inquiry that you can call the scientific method. It's a method of inquiry which comes perfectly naturally to us. You can see it today in a child. If you take a child, not an infant, somebody between two and five years old, and give them an object they've never seen before, and leave them alone with it, and they're curious. What process will they go through? Well, it's a three-step process, and not surprisingly, it's called analysis. First thing you do is take it apart. Then you try to understand what the parts do. And then finally, assemble the understanding of the parts into an understanding of the whole. Our entire culture is built on analytical thinking. If you go to a university to study any subject, say business, you don't take courses in business. Business is broken down into its parts, production, marketing, finance, personnel. And you study each of the parts, and the assumption is that when you know the parts taken separately, you'll be able to integrate that knowledge into an understanding of the whole. That's analytical thinking. Now, analysis permeated all of our institutions. It permeates corporations. How do you run a corporation? You divide it into parts, either functionally or by product or by geography. And then you arrange to run each part, and then you try to aggregate or integrate the running of the parts into a running of the whole. That's an analytical process. Organizational structure is a complete reflection of analysis, just as a university structure is. Every subject is broken up into pieces, and the studies that are conducted are the studies of the part, hopefully leaving the student or somebody to help them synthesize the parts at the end into an understanding of the whole. Now, all of this started to get us into trouble in the 1950s for an interesting reason. A German biologist by the name of Ludwig von Bertalanffy migrated from Germany to Canada because of persecution of Hitler. And when he got there, he took a number of the articles he had written in German and translated them into English and put them into a book. The book appeared in 1954, and the book itself was not so important. But the concept on which he focused turned out to be incredibly important. The book was called General Systems Theory, and it was a concept system which was essentially the camel that broke the back of the previous era. How and why requires that we understand what a system is and why the problems of analysis cannot answer critical questions about systems.